everybody to talk about stable coins. Um, so uh, let me start. I'm going to look at through more of a policy and political lens. Um, let me start by saying um, in the big picture. So when it comes to technology and technology policy, um, it's not as highly regulated as financial services. When it comes to financial services, um, anytime you're moving money in any way, and I'm not the one that made these rules or set up this crazy system that um, has always been crazy in my lifetime with all the different regulators. So if you're dealing with financial it, uh, moving money um, because of the national security concerns, uh, systemic risk, um, you know, paying the IRS, a variety of reasons, you have to deal with the, the financial services regulators and you have to deal with um, the appropriate one or ones. And, um, you know, it's called, um, and I'm sorry to be basic, but depending on your underlying activity, um, it's called functional regulation. So if you're acting like a bank, if you're a national bank, you're working with the OCC, um, there's, I forgot, there's the states too, right? So the states, you know, regulate the money transmission licenses and there are state banking charters. So um, if you are, um, you know, in, uh, doing an offering and it's a security, um, you're working with the SEC. And by the way, there's only three kinds of securities. Um, somebody taught me this. There's public, private, third one is illegal. Okay, so three kinds of securities. So um, let me go a little bit into um, what's going on in Washington and then give you sort of my take. So. Um, you know, the reason that stable coins is a, a hot topic in Washington is I think um, it's tangible. People can wrap their minds around it, um, but also because um, there is a, a deep concern um, by um, Janet Yellen and the Fed um, about how stable the stable coins are and that there could be a run. Um, stable coins today, are you know regulated um are, are regulated yes at the state level um but they are not um in the financial services sector generally speaking you can't make up your own set of rules or maybe i should say it more nicely you can't you know just come up with the best practice and go with it um unlike the tech industry where you can do that kind of thing so no matter like what a company is saying, even if they're saying I'm holding dollar for dollar or whatever it is, um, that's good and that's, that's great, but you're, you still have to um, be regulated in some way, you know, whether it's by the SEC, whether it's by the Fed, et cetera. So on to stable coins in terms of what's going on at a federal level, um, you have the president's working group um, report that came out with the stable um, coin report. Um, it said essentially that um, currently stable coins are mostly used um, to park cash um, before um, investing in other types of cryptocurrencies. So, um, you know, Gary Gensler calls that the poker chips. I don't call it that, you know, it's, Seems like it seems like money market funds, right? And then it says, um, but we see tremendous um, potential for stable coins and payments, right? They kind of it's payments you move, uh, kind of moving one thing to another place, and to the extent that they're going to be used for payments because they're you know less friction, less costly, those types of things. Um, we um, believe it should be regulated uh like a bank and congress we want you to pass a law that says that stable coins acting um should be uh, should be regulated like a bank and if you don't pass a law which by the way it's hard to pass a law in congress um then we're going to act like we are going to um potentially use our authority the, the financial stability oversight council was headed up by janet yellen We'll use our authority to potentially designate um, stable coins as systemically important. If you're designated as systemically important, then you um, wind up being regulated by the Federal Reserve 
um, which nobody likes to be regulated by the Fed. Um, there are always onerous capital requirements and they treat every um, company like it's a large money, uh, money center bank. So there's that. Then you have um, some legislation on the Hill and uh, you know, there are, uh, there are a variety of pieces so I may miss one. There's a Godheimer bill, um, which is actually pretty well written, which is um, sort of based on the banking model, but um, there's also sort of a special purpose uh, model. Then you have um, Toomey's interest in, um, in uh, um, introduced um, or put legislation out there that has sort of three principles. One is you can continue to be licensed at the state level through the MTOs. You can become a bank um, or like some kind of special purpose um, charter. And um, McHenry um, has talked about, um, and Senator Toomey is my former boss, the one thing that's really funny about the legislation, um, this is nobody that I spoke to, but um, some of our capital markets people pointed out to me is that um, the, uh, the Toomey legislation ties itself in knots to try to cut the FCC out from anything. Um, so it's kind of funny. And, um, and Mick Henry has been very much, I think, in a very similar space to probably where I am, which is functional regulation. What is the stable coin doing, right? So to me, if the stable coin is a place to park cash before you invest in something, it reminds me of a money market fund. Now, the Federal Reserve, they hate money market funds. They don't like anything they don't regulate. They think money market funds are subject to runs, but you know um, they've tightened up the regulations a couple times. But the reality is money market funds were developed by the SEC in the 70s. So maybe there's another pro and everyone's afraid of Gensler, but maybe there's another type of product um, that could be created for stable coins when they're used um, as, you know, as a way to park cash. Now, more importantly, stable coins have tremendous potential in the payments world. Um, right now, we essentially have four major networks and um, all, and we have a lot of payment systems that hook into those four networks. These are global networks that are used worldwide, you know, like Visa and MasterCard. And generally speaking, every, um, you know, with transactions, uh, debit, there's interchange fees, right? And there's not a lot of competition in terms of interchange fees. Um, and um, so stable coins um, really could come in and be disruptive in terms of either current companies um, changing the way they move money in a faster, more efficient, cheaper way, or for new entrants to come in um, and, you know, and um, create new rails um, where you have money that is, again, faster, cheaper, frictionless, all those kinds of things. So my concern is that with stable coins, that um, this push to regulate them like banks is very scary because today payment systems aren't regulated like a bank where they have to hold all this capital. And Again, um, if you regu I'm afraid that stable coins and other parts of the crypto industry will be regulated more than they would be under current law, um, which would be um, a shame because we wouldn't have that competition in the rail space. And I think that if the um, in the rail space in terms of payments, etc. I think if there's not really cooperative work with the uh, um, Federal Reserve, the Treasury, the states, et cetera, then we start to see central bank digital currency. And, the, and with that, I know that's another conversation we may be getting into, but central bank digital currency um, can, um, can mean different things, right? And we can talk about that, but it could mean um, replacing like the ACH system, like bringing in new rails, right? 
or it could mean like a big power grab and like having Fed accounts and like pushing stable coins out. Um, so I'll stop there because I think that's a whole other topic in itself.